Hey guys, Ray here, welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So I've had this power system and battery bank running my main house electrical panel for the last two months, for May and June. So I'm gonna tell you what I think of this unit after those two months. We're gonna compare last year's power bill for those two months to this year's power bill for those two months. We are gonna go through the total cost savings that it's given me, and we're gonna calculate the rough payoff time it's going to take me to uh, pay for this system I have here. So there are some things I'm going to change, but hopefully this video will help you decide if this system is right for your type of house. Maybe you want to add some more batteries. Maybe you can add a, another one of these inverters to your system, or maybe you'll want to like switch inverters all together. But if you want to have some fun, come along. So I'll just give you a quick summary of what appliances we have running in our house here. So this house is about 3,200 square feet. Now that includes a basement apartment we have downstairs. Upstairs, there's not a whole lot of large appliances, just your standard dishwasher, microwave. So the range and the clothes dryer, those are both on gas. So really the main large electrical appliance we have for upstairs is a three ton air conditioner that we have. So downstairs, we have a young couple living down there. They just have regular lights, TV, microwave, dishwasher. But for their large appliances, they have an electric range and they also have an electric clothes dryer. Okay, for the month of May, the setup we had is one 6000 XP inverter from Lux Power, and we also had three server rack batteries from Ruxu and 10 solar panels just sitting on the ground. I set up in my backyard on the dirt hill. Nothing fancy. Now those that backfeed into the grid love the spring because they can accumulate credits with their power company to compensate for the hot summer months when most likely the solar panels will be falling behind because you're running your air conditioner all day. If you're lucky enough to live in an area where your power company will let you roll over credits from one month to another. <clears throat> now this system we have here doesn't backfeed into the grid. It instead stores that power in batteries. Then it can use that power at night when the sun is down. Now I do like having the grid around if there's multiple cloudy days the grid will automatically kick in and can run my house that way. <clears throat> but let's jump right into the data for May. Okay, on the left is May of 2023. Now this is just data I downloaded from my power company. It's kind of nice because they have the average temperature of that day as well as uh, the power usage broken down by the day. So for the month of May, I spent a total of uh, 741 kilowatt hours and it's roughly 15 cents per kilowatt hour and times that by 15 cents that's a total of 111 dollars so let's jump over here for this year we're going to have solar panels out and running my total power uh, kilowatt hours was 267 and uh, 40 dollars now remember i am using the grid when i have really heavy loads that kick on and also when I have multiple cloudy days. Now I think those contributed to the $40 power bill but also I probably used some power in the morning before the sun came up and when my batteries were dead. Now I think if I had a few more solar panels out there and one more battery to handle the morning weather I think this could be a lot lower. Now for the month of May I didn't really use my air conditioner. But let's jump over to June. Now for June, I knew I needed air conditioning and I knew I needed a larger solar array. So on June 1st, I took my house back to grid while I installed this large solar array in my backyard. Now these are very large 540 watt bifacial solar panels that I got from Santan Solar. They're brand new. Usually I go to Santan Solar for dirt cheap used solar panels, but they also sell inverters and a good variety of new solar panels as well. These are the largest solar panels really I could find online at the time. So I'm gonna post a full install video of this solar array install here. But right now I just have the solar running across the ground and into the solar array, but I am going to tuck it up against the wall with conduit through the attic and down into the wall. And the solar wires should be totally hidden but I'm gonna look up some code requirements before I finish up that work and post the full video of that. Beautiful. I think it turned out good. 
Okay, so even though I had that large solar array connected to my inverter, I still had some big problems in June. And I'll tell you what those problems were and what I'm gonna do to fix that. The good news is I was able to run the inverter. It never actually got overloaded and shut down. So if there's a large load on it, it automatically switches to grid power. And I thought it would overload even the grid bypass feature, which is a total of 12,000 watts, but it never did. I never used that much power. Bad news is I was on the grid a little bit too often. So the inverter provides power to my house in two ways. One is from solar and battery, and the other is from grid. Now, when it's on solar and battery mode, it can provide power 3000 watts on each leg. So these are two 120 volt legs that come into my electrical panel. Now those two 120 volt legs work together to provide 240 volts to my 240 volt appliances. Now, if I'm away and I just have a couple lights on and my air conditioner is running, that'll pull about 4,000 watts. So it comes out to be about 2,000 watts on each leg. Pretty evenly. Now, suppose I turn on the microwave and now this leg will be overloaded and it will be 3,600 watts. Now, because one leg gets overloaded, it'll switch the entire system over to grid power. Now, I was kind of concerned about losing uh, my solar at first, but then I realized all of my solar power was just going straight into the battery while the grid was running my house. So I'll just have more power going into my batteries that I can use later, which is fine. Now, when I had problems is I was going to grid too often. All the solar was going into the battery and the battery would top off at 100% and then the solar had nowhere to go and I was wasting the solar power. So hopefully that made sense. So let's go look at the month of June. So we're gonna go through how much solar I was able to collect during this period of time and how much total savings that I have. But because I wasn't getting much solar during June and also because of the extra hot June, I was running the air conditioner all the time. Actually in 2024 June, I spent more money on power than in 2023 June. It took me a while to get that solar array in and I went out of town. So these numbers are just from June uh, 13th when I was able to finally plug that array in to the end of the month. Yeah, I still used 462 kilowatts of power and that came to $69. Now if you go to June of 2023, relatively cool month I used $59. So this is what I'm gonna do differently so I can actually use all my solar power is I'm gonna hook this uh, inverter here. This is my EV car charger. I actually didn't get an EV car uh, yet. So I'm just going to hook this in parallel with this unit here. And that, that should prevent it from jumping to the grid. All right, so we're gonna run some really rough numbers regarding cost savings and how much uh, cost we're gonna save throughout the year. So we'll do another analysis when we have a full year's worth of data, but this is just what we have very rough. So right now the system, my inverter has collected a total of 1,533 kilowatt hour, comes out to be a total of $230 saved total. Now divide that by two, it comes out to be savings of $115 per month. Times that by 12, it's $1,388 per year. Now, if you watch the first video, I go into breakdown on costs. So it's kind of different depending on what type of solar racking you're gonna get and how many batteries you're gonna get. But let's just say your system's gonna cost you $10,000. So at $1,380 per year, after seven years, I'm gonna be pretty much paying off my system. Those numbers are about the same as if I were to invest my money in historic stock market returns. However, the stock market does have a little bit harder time keeping my lights on when the power goes out. Now that's not counting the 30% tax credits you can get. So in conclusion, if you only have like a three ton air conditioner in your house and you have gas appliances like I have upstairs, one of these units should be good for you. So another thing that I noticed that I didn't notice on the original install is when I turned on my air conditioner, 
the lights would dim just a little bit. That didn't really bother me, but it did bother the tenants downstairs. So when I install the second 6000 XP, we're gonna see if that fixes the dimming. So I really like this unit. The only thing that really surprised me about it was the loudness of the fan. So supposedly the older competitors to this unit were really loud. So it can go from pretty much from dead quiet to really loud. So it seems to me like they should update some firmware in this to change the fan speed quicker, depending on the temperature sensors inside. They do let you adjust the fan percentage in the app. I think default it was set at 70%. I've lowered that down to 40% and this is pretty good. They even let you adjust it down to, I think it was 10%, but it might be dangerous if you turn the fan down that much. So I do have discount codes if you're interested in purchasing any of this equipment and those work if you use the links down below in the description. But I will also include an install video of the inverter here and this, this solar array install video here. Here. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you later.